<laughs> ESPN, right. There you go. Uh, so I'm Artie Bulgren. Uh, I run research and analytics for ESPN. Um, very pleased to be here. Uh, I was also here at the first annual Cross-Platform Measurement Summit last year. Um, I uh, want to apologize in advance uh, for if any of this that you're about to see is you've seen before, but you've got to understand that this is a campaign and I'm trying to improve my frequency metrics. Uh, for the rest of you, you're going to help me with my reach goal and I thank you in advance for that as well. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, our new project in a minute, but I wanted to review a few things since we last met at this summit last year. Now, last year I spoke about the right metrics or what I felt, what we believe based on what we had been discussing at SIM, what we believe to be the, uh, the right metrics for cross-platform cross research. And I have to say that we're kind of moving at a snail's pace. Things haven't changed very much. The problem that we still have today is that we can't answer many of the most fundamental questions about users and usage across platforms. Now, we're still working on standardization of media metrics, and so as uh, Jane talked about this morning, we applaud the work that was started last year by the IEB with help from the ANA and the 4As, and now very significantly the involvement by the MRC going forward. So uh, that's very, very important to our progress here. I also talked about the big knowledge gaps that we need to fill about intermedia usage, and they remain significant as we stand here a year later. Now, despite so much change in our business for measuring content and the exposure to average advertising, the fundamental math still hasn't changed. In our view, it continues to be about three basic measures, how many or reach, how often, frequency, and how long. Now, the sum product of how many, how often, and how long is the average minute audience. It's the base computation for ratings, and it represents the rate of usage of any medium based on the size and time spent of each audience. So it incorporates both size and engagement with that content, or even an ad. It also represents, and this is what's most important, it represents a standardized measure of audiences at any given time across platforms. It allows us to compare performance across platforms. And this is particularly important for video, right? Because video, the success of the video was really about not only the reach, the number of people that tune into it, but also the time uh, that they spend with that video, whether it be on linear television or on my tablet. All of this is important because before we can effectively evaluate engagement, intention, or action, we need reliable measures of exposure. Now, when it comes to average minute audience, ESPN has been using that metric for a number of years now as a core measure of performance across all of our platforms. It allows us to directly compare that performance on, let's comparing television, for example, against uh, digital. We've been even using it in press releases uh, as we announce our success, and very, very few people have been actually doing that really until now. So this morning, in synopsis, it was reported by CBS, David Poltrak, uh, the Masters Live snagged a record audience on CBSSports.com for the 2013 Masters Tournament. The platform drew more than 1.3 million total unique viewers over the four days of the tournament with an average minute audience for the four days passing 44,000 viewers. So thank you for that. We're making some progress. I also want to reiterate that media use is still not a zero-sum game. We know that now, but it's worth repeating. According to Knowledge Networks, based on their fall 2012 study, Americans spent over 80 hours with media per week. On average, we use about three media platforms. But if you use five media platforms, which is that stack bar on the far, far right-hand side, which probably affects or includes many of you in this audience, you're probably spending 115 hours a week with media. Extraordinary. Now, this is fabulous insight, but it also represents the challenge that we have. These are broad measures and conducted only periodically. What we need ultimately is greater precision and ongoing measurement for planning, decision-making, and on the media side for tracking the performance of our media cross platforms. And so when it comes to the most important metrics for cross platform, we must consider the full media marketing continuum, continuum, or in other words, the needs of both sellers and buyers for media and advertising. We have to do this as a group. So when SIM began uh, and we started our, crest, our, our, uh, our quest about cross platform measurement, uh, and seeking innovation in this space, SIM identified three broad areas of, of need, if you will. Plan, verify, and evaluate. So first, on the plan side, 
We needed solid measures of behavior to understand things like the size of the audience based on users and usage, insights about where, when, and even why consumers are using each platform, and then finally to inform a precise media mix and weight for each medium, very important. In the middle, you just heard about taxi, uh, a mechanism to actually verify where and when content advertise and advertising are delivered, and then finally, under evaluate, we need measures of media impact in terms of exposure, target audiences, meaning actual people and not just machines, and reach and frequency to understand how each media touch point contributes to overall delivery and goals. Now on the planning side, uh, SIM facilitated the launch of USA Touchpoints. I want to remind everybody in this room about that, which has already proven to be a very successful and powerful solution for understanding media usage behavior and providing critical insights to inform decisions about media mix and weight. Insights that could only come from a consumer-centric type of measurement, which is what USA Touchpoints is. USA Touchpoints is an essential layer of measurement for today's complex environment, uh, but in addition to that, we still need more granular measures of usage across platforms at the entity level, meaning ESPN or however you want to spell it. It also needs to be noted, it also be, needs to be noted, particularly uh, in terms of the advances that have been going on this past year, that ad measurement and content measurement across platforms have been progressing on separate paths, which I think is right. But ad measurement across platforms, while still incomplete, is progressing at a faster rate than content measurement. So we can't let content measurement across platforms fall further behind. Ad impressions measure what has potentially been seen or heard, but we also need content measures to understand media behavior and to identify new and best opportunities for exposure in the future. In order to understand the future, we need to better understand how our content is being used today and, and complete and fill in those knowledge gaps for the future. So as most of you know by now, my company, ESPN, has been investing in cross-platform measurement for a long time, probably about, tw about 12 years right now. And in 2010, we decided to elevate our focus and investment in cross-platform research under the brand ESPN XP. And so at that time, we established three fundamental goals for ESPN XP. First, to move cross-platform measurement from special project to standard practice, to do this on an ongoing basis. To inform media plans with more predictive measures and consumer insights. And finally, to establish a link from the cross-platform measures to existing media currencies and ad performance research. The ability to plan more effectively, to propose more effective, effectively from our side, and then execute that plan and measure results. So after dabbling in a few custom projects since 2010, we have initiated uh, a new focus on content measurement across platforms. Our goal is to create a blueprint or a scalable foundation for cross-platform content measurement that the industry can adopt and grow. We're just the instigators here. For this to work, we need everybody in this room to jump on board. So just as digital media has enabled rapid growth in media usage and caused a lot of headaches for us in this room, it's now helping us and enabling measurement for the future. We believe that a hybrid approach utilizing census level data that provide timely, granular observations in combination with projectable single source data sets can be the solution that provide ongoing measurement across platforms. Now like USA Touchpoints, Project Blueprint is a direct result of the work that SIM has done in the past to incubate innovative ideas for cross-platform video measurement. So early last year, Arbitron introduced uh, a single source solution, a pilot study based on their personal portable meter, and Comscore created a hybrid approach integrating data from a uh, large digital set-top box TV panel and their unified mobile and online measurement solutions. We were impressed with the results of both of these companies and both of these projects. However, neither one alone uh, was able to satisfy the needs on ESPN being so deep into five platforms and across three content types. But we thought, why not combine the core capabilities of both companies, utilizing the best methods from those SIM projects, a hybrid, hierarchical approach that could give us the scale and detail that we need. So we asked both companies, and they agreed. The project was formally announced in the U.S. last September during Advertising Week, and we're about midway into building the first and Colleen did a great job with this. Nationally projectable, five-platform, continuously operating, persons-based, programmer-inclusive 
welcome, inclusive, integrated media solution. It's a tall order, but I'm very impressed by the process that we've made so far, and I think we're going to have a lot to talk about in the next few months. So to describe how this works, first, let's talk about how we're going to supply data on each individual platform. And note, for purposes of the graphics here, that smartphones are tablets, and tablets are collapsed into one mobile category. Otherwise, you're looking at uh, five unique platforms. So for television, we'll be combining set-top box or return path data from a very large panel that Comscore has assembled uh, around the country with demographic viewing information from Arbitron's PPM, which has years of experience collecting television data both inside and outside the home. Radio, of course, will come from the currency from the Arbitron PPM panel, and Comscore will be supplying data on PC and mobile from the unified data measurement technique now called Media Metrics Multiplatform, which was uh, introduced just a couple of months ago. And so that will uh, uh, supply our, our data across PC and mobile. So we've got uh, sources including the portable meter, uh, portable people meter from Arbitron, and unified data measurement from uh, Comscore on the digital side, in addition to the uh, television set-top box layer, all, also, or also managed by Comscore. Now, a big element of this is the ability to measure duplication across these five platforms. Not very easy. And our approach is this. Uh, the project will first use the best available data sources, data sources that exist today and have been proven mostly, to measure overlapping reach and usage proceeding in a hierarchical fashion. So TV and radio duplication will come from the 70,000 plus PPM panelists around the country that are already supplying this information. PC and mobile tablet duplication, this will come from Com Comscore's unified measurement, which again already exists. Um, we've been evaluating this data already. TV and PC data will be produced by Comscore as well, and so among common Comscore internet and set-top box, TV set-top box panelists, using the Comscore beacon, duplication between television and internet will be calculated at the entity level, meaning television network programs, websites, etc. And then in addition to that, TV, PC, PC, and mobile data, including tablet or duplication across those three platforms, will also come from Comscore. They will identify a subset a TV, of their TV set-top box panel that are also internet users who use home Wi-Fi to create an internet mobile panel which will enable the source, that'll be the source for TV mobile duplication and TV mobile uh, TV online and mobile duplication at the same time by connecting those devices you the, using the IP address in the home. And so you have the, the complete picture. Now, these are the duplication sets that we have available to us now, sort of proven data sets to measure duplication where that is possible. We will be ultimately receiving millions of data points around the country that will be collected each day for each of the five platforms. And those will need to be integrated based on nationally projectable single source calibration panel. And so in combination with the pairwise approach that I just described, the calibration panel will inform the full five-way multi-platform duplication model so we can look at the duplication across all of those platforms. And this, the plan is to adjust this on an ongoing basis. So I'm happy to report that this critical element of the project was completed a short time ago which with uh, just over 2,000 PPM panelists uh, providing television and radio data. Now these same panelists were asked to download a Coms Comscore meters on their PC, smartphones, and tablets. And then ultimately this will be used to unify and calibrate the data that we're collecting around the country, the big data, if you will, to make it nationally projectable. So to sum up, Here's how we envision the elements of this project coming together. First, we'll have individual platform usage, as you see there, across TV, radio, PC, and mobile, or smartphone and tablet, combined with existing multi-platform duplication factors. This will be harmonized and calibrated using the single source panel and then integrated and adjusted daily using a client interface. It's going to be remarkable if it works, I can tell you. <laughs> but I have, <laughs> I have confidence in everybody that's been working on this. So for phase one, Blueprint will report on ESPN multi-platform data at the entity level. Uh, we've been working very, very hard on developing program name dictionaries and uh, harmonizing that with uh, standardized naming conventions for all of our digital assets. Uh, so we'll be able to look at that eventually once we get those data sets back. But we'll also be reporting total national multi-platform data for the broadcast months of April, May, and June. That's a data set 
that we will begin to share with the industry, make that available to the in industry, most likely through SIM, for evaluation and considered acceptance going forward. So, and I apologize for the aspect ratio here. Everything we've been doing so far has been 16 by 9, and this is 4 by 3, so my Venn diagram is going to look more like overlapping ovals. Um, but our hope is that the informed view now, as a result of this project, of how Americans interact with these devices on an hourly, daily, weekly, monthly basis, on a campaign level, will change from this to something like this. So the goal now, going forward, this is our plan over the next few months, uh, is to complete phase one, uh, which is really the pilot, if you will. We're, again, we're, we're funding, we are the initial client to Arbitron and Comscore to get this thing going. So we want to complete phase one with total usage and ESPN level reporting by this summer, middle of summer. Our plan is also to be very transparent about this and share general findings and methods with the industry. I think the most significant date for that will be at ARF 8 AM 8.0 later on this June. If you haven't registered yet, please do so. Uh, if you have any questions, we've got plenty of ARF representatives in the room that can help you. And finally, after that, there's going to be a lot of work, a lot of sharing to assess the accuracy, the validity, and the reliability of these results and ultimately the viability of offering this up to the industry as a syndicated service. Now the goal, certainly from an ESPN perspective, I can say, is not to create a new currency, but to provide an essential layer of research that measures usage and behavior across platforms and content types to fulfill achieving the measures of things like how many, how often, and how long, to better understand how Americans are using platforms across different content types, uh, how their behavior differs across these platforms throughout the day. We're spending 11 and a half hours with media per day. We have to understand how that behavior occurs in the first place. The result of this measurement and the insights it produces will be improved precision, uh, precision for media proposals on the publisher side. And as a broader industry service, we think that this will be a watershed for agency media planning and filling lots of knowledge gaps and better informing those media mix models going forward. So, I want to thank you for this audience. I want to thank you for your time. I'm excited about the prospects for this project and the implications of it, uh, to the entire industry. But I'll say this again, we can't sustain this alone. This is not an ESPN project. We're getting this started, and we need to all share in this. I also want to thank Arbitron and Comscore for, I got to tell you, after observing this now for the last six months, their unprecedented collaboration and dedicated, uh, dedication to this effort and also for SIM to making this uh, possible in the first place. And of course, uh, my team, which is sitting in the back there, which has uh, consumed endless hours across this, led by Glenn Enoch, who's been the leader on this, Kelly Johnson, who's been spending hours on this, Dave Coletti, and a whole host of people on my team that have been doing this. So we're on schedule, and we look forward to sharing results in the next few months. So now we're going to change gears a little bit and learn about some patterns of cross-media usage that emerged in a new study from Microsoft presented by Natasha Hritzuk, the Global Senior Director of Consumer Insights at Microsoft. Welcome, Natasha.